Hey all. Uh, I'm sure if you've been on Facebook or social media in the past few months, you've seen a lot of hate directed towards our generation, the Millennials. Uh, now, typically a Millennial is thought to be a person born between the years 1984 and 2002, but there's some leeway in those numbers. Um, if you've been on Facebook in the past few weeks, you've likely seen this video shared around called The Problem with Millennials Through the Eyes of a Millennial. Uh, it features a young lady in her car giving an extensive and well-thought-out dissertation as to why our generation is indeed exactly what our elders call us to be. Entitled, lazy, and just plain worthless. Let's take a look at the video that they cropped off square with text for some reason. If you guys have anyone on your social media like I do, that's over the age of 40, um, you've probably seen them post at some point about how much our generation sucks. Well, as a millennial, I took it upon myself. In the middle of the day, in your car, at the rest area. To try to evaluate what's so wrong with our generation and why they're so mad at us. And then I pretty much realized that we're just existing. We're not really contributing anything to society. Now let's be real here. There are tons of successful people in our generation. There are entrepreneurs, there are scholars, and all around good humans. We are on track to be the most educated generation in our nation ever. And that is not a bad thing. Our generation doesn't have the basic manners that include no ma'am and yes ma'am. Well, you see, sir and madam are just short form or slang derived from the word sire or madam. Um, for madam, it's even further from my dame. Um, I mean, granted, in our, in our language, in American English, um, those terms evolved to be a sort of title greeting um, for politeness and sincerity, but it isn't really surprising that we're getting far away from them as time passes. And even more so, let's not pretend like those words are the only way to be polite to another human being. We don't even hold the door open for ladies, much less our elders anymore. Are you kidding me? Since we're just citing random anecdotal evidence, I'll do the same. I've been alive on this planet for 24 years, and I was taught the following method when it came to holding doors for people. Let's take a look at this incredibly well-made graphic. Now let's assume that the person at the door is you. If you are at that door, you should hold the door open for the person approaching in Zone A. Now Zone A extends between 6 to 10 feet behind you. It's polite for you to hold the door for them. Now let's look at the person in zone B. You should not hold the door for the person in zone B. It is not rude for you to not hold the door for them. In fact, I think it's rude for you to hold the door open for them. By holding the door open for them, you're putting a lot of pressure on them to move faster and to succumb to your politeness. Now if I'm being honest, what the woman in the video is implying is that you should hold the door open for women and the elderly. Now I'm fine with holding the door for the elderly. But holding the door for women exclusively creates this weird situation for guys where you're placing a really high internal praise on something as simple as holding a door. Almost like you're expecting something back out of it. When you shouldn't. It's just holding a door. You should do it for everyone. The only real exclusion to this rule is if somebody's carrying a lot of things and it's blatantly obvious that they'll be completely unable to open the door. And then still, only if it's a reasonable distance. We listen to really obscene music that degrades women. You got me. You're not wrong. There is definitely some music out there that's problematic in its views towards women. But this is not a new trend. And by my sight, I see that it's getting better, not getting worse. Also, this phrase that you're using is often used to refer specifically to rap music and R&B. And because of that, let's take a quick trip through the history of white music. Just someone to keep my house clean, fix my meals and go away. Turn around, bitch, I got a use for you. It's not when I'm away, she puts a makeup on the shelf. When I'm away, she never leaves the house. And pretty much glorifying.
glorifies drugs and crime. Early one morning while making the rounds, I took a shot of cocaine and I shot my woman down. I went right home and I went to bed. I stuck at love and 44 beneath my head. We start to cuss now to prove a point. Shit. We use words like bay to describe someone we love. You know, you got me. I have never heard another word with a similar meaning to bay. And we idolize people like Kim Kardashian, and then we shame people like Tim Tebow. Do we as a culture have an overabundance of celebrity worship? Yeah. Is Kim Kardashian a celebrity? Yes. Is Tim Tebow a celebrity? Yes. Now, let's take a minute and analyze the difference between these two people. lazy, we're really entitled, and we want to make a lot of money and have free education, but we're not really willing to put in the work. I, I can only assume the first part is a welfare knock, and I mean the numbers of welfare spending in our country are indeed going up, um, but I don't think that that is a product of laziness, and even more specifically, the laziness of just our generation. Let's take a look at a graphic. See, she is right here in one regard. If you, if you look as the years go by recently, um, the number of SNAP participants are going up. Uh, but what is this line? Unemployment rate? Poverty? It's almost like these things are connected in some way. As far as the free education thing goes, I'll refer to an often cited piece of data. Each dot on this graph represents the number of hours needed to work in a minimum wage job in order to pay for a full year of an average college tuition in the United States. Um, the gray line represents the length of a typical summer break where most students are able to work full-time. Um, as you can see here, it's really easy to pay for school on a minimum wage job recently. Um, you just have to work, what, 50 weeks out of the year full-time, uh, evolve past the need for food with photosynthesis, and never ever spend money on rent or anything you ever want or need. And um, then you have enough. Easy, right? We spend more time online making friends and less time actually building relationships. There has never been a genuine relationship that has started online. She is absolutely correct. Our idea of standing up for something we believe in go means going on Facebook and posting a status with your opinion. Forty. Um, you've probably seen them post at some point about how much our generation sucks. Well, as a millennial, I took it upon myself to try to evaluate what's so wrong with And we believe the number of followers we have reflects who we are as a person. Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Because a vision softly creeping We don't respect our elders. We don't even respect our country. We're stepping on our flag instead of stepping up to volunteer. This is just typical jingo patriotic bullshit. There is no indication that we are volunteering less as a population. And maybe we're stepping on the flag because we're upset in the direction that our country is going. We're allowed to do that. It's called protest. And we mock the men and women that are fighting for us, but we praise the people that are fighting each other, guys. We're more divided as a country than ever before, and I think our generation actually has a lot to do with that. Everything that used to be frowned upon is now celebrated. Nothing has value in our generation because we take advantage of everything. We have more opportunities to succeed than any of those before us, yet we don't appreciate the opportunities we have now. Now I guess I see why people call generation Y. Like, why are we so excited about the same absurdity we're raising? I think that our generation...